Hey, what's up filmmakers? My name is Bobby from Wedding Film School and today I'm excited to be kicking off a brand new series on this channel made for those of you who are just starting out. That is right, it is Wedding Film School Camera Basics. Now this will be the first of a handful of tutorials breaking down the ins and outs of your basic camera settings, which will be setting you up for success when you're filming weddings or other projects. And in this first video, we're gonna be talking all about Aperture. So what is Aperture? Aperture may also be referred to as f-stop or iris, and it's actually not on your camera at all, but rather in your lens. It refers to the opening that opens and closes from the blades of your lens based on what you have it set at. The aperture settings of a lens are always a deciding factor in what lens you might want to purchase, and they will generally range from 1.2 to 22, though some may fall outside of that range. If you ever hear somebody talking about having their shot set at f2, for example, that's the aperture that they're talking about. You may also hear someone talk about a fast lens versus a slow lens, and oftentimes, though not always, that is in reference to the widest aperture that is available on a lens. A fast lens, for example, might have a lowest value of f1.4, while a slow lens might be f5.6 at its fastest setting. And while the aperture is a part of the lens, with most cameras you will be controlling the aperture with the camera buttons. Though if you are using vintage glass or lenses without any electronics, you may find the aperture setting as a ring on the lens itself. Some zoom lenses will have a fixed aperture, meaning that no matter how far zoomed in you are, the base aperture remains the same. And some have a variable aperture, meaning that as you zoom in with the lens, the base aperture available is going to be a higher number and let less light in. Now let's talk about the purpose of aperture. Put simply, aperture controls how much light is let into the camera, so it's a function of exposure. An aperture is one of the three settings that make up the triangle of exposure, in addition to shutter speed and ISO, which we'll get to in future videos. When you set your aperture to a lower number, for example, f1.4, you are widening that hole created by the lens blades and allowing more light to hit your sensor. When you set your aperture to a higher number, say f16, you're closing that hole, commonly referred to as stopping down, and letting in less light. But it doesn't just let more light in, it also changes your focal plane or the amount of things that are in focus. If you're shooting wide open, let's say f1.4, you're gonna have a shallow depth of field. This would be where your subject or maybe even a part of your subject is in focus, while the things behind and in front of them get increasingly out of focus. Shooting wide open is used often in weddings and can help produce that creamy out of focus area, commonly called bokeh. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you have a shot at a much higher aperture and this will have much more in focus. Now let's apply this to weddings and being a wedding filmmaker. First, how does aperture affect the gear you choose to buy? For weddings, we generally recommend getting lenses that we consider fast, which if you remember, means they have a low aperture available something like f1.2 or maybe f2. This doesn't mean you should always use those settings, but it's nice to have them available in certain lighting situations. These will be more easy to find with prime lenses or lenses that don't zoom. For zoom lenses, we still recommend fast apertures, but perhaps just as important, we recommend fixed apertures, which we discussed earlier, as you don't want your settings to change when you zoom in, especially in a fast paced setting like a wedding. And lastly, what aperture setting should you be using at a wedding? The answer to this unfortunately isn't as straightforward as it's a balance between the settings you need in order to properly expose, the settings you want to prioritize in other functions of the exposure triangle, as well as the shot you are after and the situation you are in. If I want a shallow depth of field in a shot, I will open up my aperture. And if I want a lot to be in focus, I will stop down. Similarly, if I am shooting a stationary object, it's easy to keep it in focus even if I've got a very shallow depth of field. Sometimes though, I may want a shallow depth of field, but it might make my focus too difficult to pull. This would happen in situations with a lot of movement, say for example, a first dance. In that scenario, if I feel like I might not be able to keep the subject in focus, I might opt to stop down in order to make my job a bit easier. But ultimately, there is no right or wrong in which aperture setting you choose to use. It all depends on the shot you want to get and the exposure settings you choose to prioritize. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button as well as the notification bell. If you have any questions about Aperture, leave them down below in the comments. 
We've got multiple more videos in this series breaking down the basics of your camera. So be sure to keep an eye out for those. And we'd love to have you follow along on our other videos on this channel, Wedding Film School, including our weekly podcast, The Wedding Film School Show, our weekly live film reviews from the community members, and of course, tutorials and gear reviews.